This is a review of the Sensor SG500. If you decide to pick this up, it will set you back just under 25 US dollars. Affiliate links in the description down below. Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Joe and I make tech videos for the common user. Here it is all about the experience and none of the technical jargon unless absolutely necessary. If this sounds like content that you would enjoy, please consider subscribing. If at any point during this video you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. This is a gaming headset that's very competitively priced at just under 25 US dollars. It is almost completely black except for some orange text. The build is mostly plastic except for the headband and wireframes that hold each ear cup. It resembles earmuffs made for sound protection, giving it sort of an industrial look and feel. The plastic is matte black with a surface that's very smooth to the touch. The ear cups can be vertically adjusted and folded for easy carrying, although there is no carrying bag included. The ear pads have a soft padding wrapped in fall leather. They are also held by Magnus, which is a nice surprise as it adds a little bit of a premium feel to the headset. They have big L and R letters to identify the left and channels and right channels respectively. The microphone is on the left ear cup and it is super flexible and easy to adjust thanks to it being made by metal wire. I will show you what the mic sounds like in just a minute. The left ear cup also has what appears to be a knob of some sort, but it's merely aesthetic as it serves no function. It doesn't even move. While on the topic of aesthetics, the ear cups have what appears to be small grills that also serve no purpose other than to look good. All the cables are braided, even those that go from the left ear cup and around the headband to the right ear cup. There is an included microphone splitter and even that has braided cables, which is really nice. On the main cable, there is an analog volume control with a volume switch. Speaking of sound, these are bass and mid heavy with not a lot of detail in the highs. They are good for most types of music genres as well as for gameplay. The headphones can get very loud with no discernible distortion on the bass, which is nice. Sound isolation is excellent. If there is any sound playing, I can't even hear myself speak. There is little to no sound leakage either. As for the name and description claiming this is a surround headset, let me tell you just right now that any headset that has a 3.5mm plug is not in itself a surround sound headset. This is something that's been misleading in pretty much every single gaming headset that you can find that has a 3.5mm plug. So don't believe that the description, this is only marketing, there is not surround sound features in this type of headphones when it has a 3.5 millimeter plug. So do not buy any headset for the surround sound if it only has a 3.5 millimeter plug. Let me also clarify that you can listen to virtual surround sound on this headset and any other headset with a 3.5 millimeter plug as long as the source of the audio is surround. You can achieve this with certain gaming audio interfaces such as the Sennheiser EPOS GSX-1000 or with software such as the Razer 7.1 surround sound that comes with some of their gaming headsets. In the case of the Razer software, even if it does come with some headsets, those headsets are 3.5mm plug compatible. Any 3.5mm plug that you use or any well, headset that you use that has a 3.5mm plug will work with that Razer software. In the end, it's just virtual surround that works pretty well with only two channels. Okay, so I did digress a little bit there, but I did want to get that out of the way. So now we're gonna get ready for a microphone test. This entire video is being recorded with an Audio-Technica AT2020, which is a condenser microphone. Okay, so I now have turned off sound processing so that you can listen to what the AT2020 AT2020 sounds like and compare it to the microphone on the SG500. And now you are listening to the SG500 microphone. From what I can tell, this microphone has like an inverted type of equalization. This basically means that the bass is cut off as well as the highs, meaning leaving only the mids accentuated or, well, pronounced anyway. This helps the microphone focus on voice clarity over anything else. Although it is not exactly noise cancelling, I feel like the equalization on this microphone helps you with ignoring much of the background noise and how much of it is actually being picked up. In my opinion, this microphone is great for voice chats during gaming sessions as well as for voice calls, Zoom meetings and overall any type of voice application. Now one thing I don't like about this microphone is that the mute switch has a very loud pop, as you can listen right now.
Okay, so this is what the microphone actually sounds like when the camera is not connected to my computer via USB. For some reason, the USB connection causes a ground loop, which is why you were listening to that annoying hum. So if you connect this headset to your computer, you should not be having any problems whatsoever. In fact, I actually did my first tests on the computer directly, connecting the microphone directly to the, or the headset rather, directly to the computer, and there were no issues. The sound was loud and clear, with no hum, no ground loop. There are devices you can buy to eliminate the ground loop in case that you need to have this same exact setup where the headset is connected to the camera and the camera connected to the computer via USB. So I will link a ground loop isolator or remover adapter in case you happen to need it. So I just wanted to point it out that the hum was not the fault of the headset, it was just the fault of the way the camera responds to a USB connection and having an external source of audio. Okay, so now I'm back to the processed audio. And while on the topic of things that I don't like much about this headset, well, although the microphone sounds great, in my opinion, I'm not a fan of it being held on a wire. Now, this does make the microphone very easy to adjust, but this type of wire tends to break over time. I didn't find them to be too comfortable when using with glasses, at least not for sessions over 30 minutes. Your mileage may vary, of course. I'm not a fan of the wire framing. It feels fragile and they allow only for adjusting the ear cups vertically. I also feel there is more pressure on the upper area than the lower area. I am also not a fan of the analog volume control. You saw, or you heard rather, the popping on the mute switch, but this type of inline volume control tends to be a fail point in headsets that I've tried in the past. Having that said, for the price, you get a pretty good mic, you get good sound overall. I mean, every pretty much any music genre will be enjoyed by this gaming headset. It has good noise isolation and immersion for games and movies. The magnetic cushions add a premium feel to them. So bottom line, do I recommend the SG500s to you? The thing is that at this price point, there is so much competition that it really comes down to whether or not you like the look of them. As far as sound and microphone goes, this will work pretty great and you will be happy with them. This review was made with a retail sample provided by the distributor. However, they had no editorial input nor did they see a preview of it. And they provided no compensation in exchange for the making of this video. So basically all opinions are my own. So there you have it. How do you like this gaming headset? Are you planning on getting one for yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. I really hope that you found this video helpful or at the very least entertaining. If you did, please let the glorious YouTube algorithm know by ever so gently hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. So this is it. If I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next time and until then, may God bless you all.